Orville Nation. Welcome, everybody. We have an amazing show tonight. And, of course, we are doing Dark Matter Monday. And we're doing a special fundraiser for our friend, Bird O Prey 5. Uh, so uh, we're going to have we, have, we have some amazing guests. Uh, we have the gang here. Uh, we have Baron Destructo himself. We have Adega. We have uh, Nina and Katie. And we have a science fiction, uh, another science fiction author, Ty MFS. Uh, so uh, we have, our, of course, our two very special guests, Melanie Orr and Natalie Brown. We're going to introduce them real soon. Let's get started. Hello. Hey. hey, what's going on? You guys can hear me all right? Yep. yep. Can hear you perfect now. Great. How are you guys doing? How are you ladies doing? Um, how is uh, how is um, meteorologist Katie's week and what's it, what's good, what's it looking like? It's looking good. We're in post-production for the fandom forecast with Doctor Who. So uh, very excited about that one. Should be dropping it within the week just a few little technical things that the green screen didn't necessarily pick up so we're gonna finish editing that in we'll have that and then you're hopefully still joining us for our order of the blue lotus avatar the last airbender podcast oh yes absolutely i am i have become an airbender i have yes. become an airbender Yay. totally welcome to the cult totally. it's great <laughs> uh, but yeah so we're gonna do that on our show uh, it's my channel wednesdays uh, about 5 30 Central, 6.30 Eastern. Have to remember that time conversion. And uh, it's going to be great. Awesome. Awesome, Katie. Thanks for the invitation to the Airbender, by the way. Uh, stream, really looking forward to it. And uh, hello to Nina Infinity. Hey, What do you going have going on, on young lady? Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm a little late dropping the Infinite Hope highlights, but that's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, Infinite Hope on Fridays. Uh, this week on Wednesday, Ryan Kendall is going to be on uh, my channel for Infinite Talk. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, yeah, check me out on my channel. It's, it's good stuff. And then awesome. tonight I'll be on Midnight's Edge for uh, Toxic Femininity. Toxic Femininity. Yeah. Yes. Um, I want to remind everybody, I'm going to ask everybody not to super chat tonight. Uh, please don't super chat. Instead, um, we're going to be putting up the link continuously mm -hmm. for the uh, Bird of Prey 5 Get Bird Some Wheels. Uh, Bird of Prey, our friend Bird of Prey, uh, he has been stuck. Um, by the way, Natalie, I see you. Uh, we're going to bring you in one at a time. Hello, Natalie. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're, Bird of Prey has been stuck um, ever since he, he, uh, he got pancreatitis and he he slipped into a coma. Uh, he has been homebound for 12 years, over 12 years. Um, as you guys know, he's paralyzed from the waist down. For now, for now, we got to one day, Bird. You know, it's it's uh, there's a good chance Bird will walk us at some point. So uh, for now, uh, but right now he needs he does need a wheelchair. He is six foot five. He is basically an NFL linesman, and he cannot find a wheelchair to replace his 10 year old wheelchair. And uh, that is what our, our um, that is what our GoFundMe is about today. And thank you to uh, Joe and our two guests, uh, Melanie and, uh, and Natalie for, for joining us. This was a little improvised. We did not mean to do a fundraiser, uh, but um, I, it's, 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 it's for, it's urgent for, um, for our friend Joe, for Bird of Prey. And Kapla Bird of Prey, and let's get started. Um, welcome Bird of Prey. Good to see you, my friend. Um, all right. Uh, I want to introduce um, Dr. Uh, let's introduce the two uh, science fiction authors uh, at the time. Well, there's, there's three. There's Joe, of course. Let's introduce Adega and Kai together. Hello. Welcome, Kai MFS and uh, Dr. Adega Outlaw. Hey. Hello. Hey. It's Good awesome you for you guys to join us. Thank you so much for joining us, Kai and uh, Adega. Oh, you oh, can no, draw no, me no, away. No. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. Your turn. I said what I needed. Okay. I was going to say, I'm glad I finally got around to watching the show. It's freaking great. You know, you guys were telling me for a while and I finally got around to it. And uh, yeah, man, it's been fun. Awesome. We've, we've well, converted you, another one, Joe. Who's your favorite <laughs> character, Kai? Three. Ah, nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Like well, I'm like uh, Nikola Tesla, with, not to the, his extreme with the number three, but I love the number three, and so I do a lot of things in threes, 
and uh, etc. So when I saw three and his personality and like the 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 piece that he fits in the crew, I was really happy with that. I've I've, I've loved three. He's freaking great. Awesome. Um, uh, really quick, Kai, what's coming up on your channel? <clears throat> um, I'm actually going to try to record a video uh, this afternoon. I'm talking about anime, writing in anime, characters, breakdowns, stuff like that uh, soon. But, uh, but yeah, I'm still figuring all that out, uh, scripted content and whatnot. I don't know. Because I don't want to sit there and, and just try to talk and, and waste my time with a terrible, terrible cut. <laughs> But yeah, that's about it. Gotcha. And you uh, tell us real quick what's the the name of your uh, uh, the um, the novel you published? My book is uh, Space Crime Domino. Uh, I can drop a link in the chat. Please drop it in the chat. Here. Yeah, <laughs> and it's available yeah, on Crime Amazon. Domino. Right? Yep, it's in a, a future where people are all people on Earth all have uh, are all labeled based on their genetics. And we were uh, following a group of pirates on a rescue mission and the government strike team hunting them down because they stole an alien. So, <laughs> Awesome. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to read that at some point whenever I can. Um, Adega, what's new with, uh, with Adega? Um, pretty much the same thing. The uh, episode that I did for Top 5 should be out uh Three weeks, I think, is it's a tough estimate, but I'll give you guys a heads up. And then I already got my next assignment. Um, it's right up my alley. It has to deal with uh, uh, my old profession, so I, I should be able to burn through that one pretty quick. But it's it's I'm writing four different things at once. It's nuts, and I'm starting to appreciate Joe all the more. <laughs> I know right? we all are. As for the further we get into everything, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, speaking about Joe, uh, let's introduce the man who has created. Um, oh wait, before I introduce Joe, let me just really get, get this out of the way. Um, I want to thank uh, Captain Trek, Deej, Nerdrotic, Gary from Nerdrotic, Doomcock, uh, Tom, and Andre from Midnight's Edge, Popcast Guys, and everyone, every single person who has donated. We're almost to the $5,000 uh, goal for Bird. I want to thank everybody who's done that. So thank you so much. Um, everybody who is who's done it anonymously or has done it otherwise, thank you everybody for uh, for tweeting it out. If you could not uh, support it as well, um, okay. We have three very special guests. We have Melanie, Natalie, and Joseph. Uh, let's bring in the creator of this wonderful universe and some and hopefully he's he's already working on dark, on Dark Matter season four or five or or, 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 or mini series or something. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Baron Destructo himself. Welcome to our friend Joe. Welcome, Joseph. Hello. Hey. Yay. Hey, nice Joe. to see everyone. Kai, how's it going? Good. Great to meet you, and and uh, thank you for the awesome show. Oh, you're you're more than welcome. Thank you for uh, for checking us out. Oh hell yeah! Honestly, I avoided it for a long time because it's called dark matter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I hate that trope in like sci-fi writing where they just. They say, "Oh, well, it's dark matter," and they just blame dark matter for things. And like, it gets a bad. So, like, the show called Dark Matter. I was like, I don't know about this, man. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you checked it out. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Hearing you guys talk about it, I was like, okay, this looks like not what I was afraid of. So, and the, it's supposed <laughs> to be good, and it is. So yeah. Well, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Uh, you know, it uh, it it uh, passed the bar. So yeah. Kai, are you caught up to like the current episode we're going to be talking about? Yep, three ten, right? Yeah. Sweet. Oh, it's most. So you mean? Wow. Okay, excellent. So let's get started. The first guest I want to introduce uh, is uh, our director of this episode, and and this, as as she mentioned just before we went on, it was her first hour of produced television, and just um, hit it out of the park. The talented Melanie Orr. Hello. 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 Welcome. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's an Very, honor to have you. Yes, delighted yes. to have you. And also with us today is um, actress Natalie Brown, who plays the role of Sarah on Dark Matter. And uh, welcome, Natalie. Woo! Hey, Natalie. Hello. Hello. Hey, Natalie, I'm joining us. You're doing something new with your hair. 
Oh no, you tried to do something new with my hair. This has always been my hair. I just <laughs> had to keep it under wraps in space. <laughs> nice. We used to tame it for the show then. <laughs> the atmosphere wasn't quite right in space for my hair. But yeah, this I actually just tried to tame it. It was twice the size a moment ago. I, it's I feel you, Natalie. I feel you oh. big time. Oh yeah. Same. See? Same. Yeah. <laughs> Can't tame the beast. Can't tame the beast. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, before we get started, I want to know sort of what Melanie and uh, and Natalie are are working on now. What do you guys What do you guys got in the hopper? Sure. Uh, well, I just finished directing a show called Children Ruin Everything, which is a half hour comedy. I'm so excited for that. So, yeah. So it was true. Really fun. So true. I really like that title. It's a very harsh title, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. My favorite comedic actors from Canada all back here on that show. I know it was really great. It was, uh, I mean, it was a tough pandemic show to shoot, but uh, it was hilarious. And it's not going to come out, I think, until January or February. So that'll be a little while. And uh, I started today prep on a new show called Overlord and Underwoods, which is a half hour family comedy about an intergalactic fish out of water story. It's comedy. So more, a little bit of sci fi fun there, too. Nice. That's what I've been up to. Natalie, what are you doing? Um, actually, I haven't worked in a little. The last thing I did was uh, a couple of crazy episodes of Silence of the Lambs, the the spinoff Clarice. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So I and apparently Joe, you saw something in me I didn't know existed about like, playing really dark and bad because uh, this was really dark and bad. Uh, yeah. So that was a crazy pandemic shoot as well. And then I'm about to leave for Newfoundland to do an episode of, of um, Hudson and Rex. Oh, fun. Rex, yeah. Like cool. the antithesis of everything dark and evil. <laughs> yeah. You know? Dogs. I'm looking Rex forward to something. Yeah, dogs and, you know. Yeah. I hear yeah. I hear that that dog is a bit of a prima donna. I well, mean, I don't want to sort of, of them. you know. Oh, there's three? That makes sense. I think there's three. And I totally defer, like, I'm not an A-type. I'm a happy B mm -hmm. or C, so right. she can <laughs> she can be <laughs> I have to say, sort of, so how, how's, you know, for, first Natalie, um, we were casting for the role of Sarah, and uh, Anthony Lemke, who plays the character of three, was yeah. like, you know who would be really great for this role? You know, my friend Natalie Brown, I'm so and he lucky. was right. Oh. I mean, he was absolutely delighted to uh, to have you on the show, and obviously, so were we. I mean, you guys got along uh, so well, and and your on screen chemistry was 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 amazing. Oh, I love me, I love Anthony. We worked together like a handful of times, um, video games, and then um, I don't know, like unrequited lovers and divorcees and so this was this was great because uh it was just nice to kind of pull up the softer side of three you know mm -hmm. his portrayal of three was so tough and he did it so well but not like sarah and myself know the softer side of anthony and three right. so it was pretty really <laughs> fun to sort of you know play those notes or pull those notes out of three it was great yeah, I, you know, it's funny because, you know, Kai said three is his favorite character. And, and I was wondering how many episodes have you seen? Because after the the the, the opening two-parter aired, people like online were like, I hate that character. No, that is the awful. worst character. Really? I hate him. And it wasn't it. until episode seven, That's the great. character where Sarah was introduced, that the, the tide kind of turned and people were like, you know what? Actually, he's maybe not such a bad guy. And then by the end of the third season, he was like, along with the Android, the fan favorite. And a lot of it had to do with uh, with uh, the character of Sarah and your performance now and your ability uh, to- uh, It's all your uh, fault. Temper, temper his, uh, <laughs> you know. But also his performance. I mean, yes, he's like- you yeah, know, He was okay, he's, uh, he was okay. Yeah, he's got range, he's got range. Um, but no, uh, so- I liked him from the beginning, from episode one. Like he's, uh, I thought he was great. Oh, so I was um, the, the thing is, I've been three. Like I, I was that person that was like uh, a little bit rough around the edges at first, and then you kind of realize, oh, maybe this guy's not really a jerk. Maybe he's just 
that's just how he's going about this. He's but wildly misunderstood. misunderstood. Yeah, exactly. Misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and this <laughs> was a really great. Right this was a really great episode for him because he kind of comes full circle regarding his uh, distrust for androids, and uh, and finally comes around and and uh, and uh, apologizes to the android. I mean, basically, the, the a lot of the android scenes in 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 in, in this episode were were really kind of stand out for me. Her her scene with with Roger uh, six and her scene with. Uh, with uh, Anthony at the end, and even comes around and comes around to sort of liking Victor, um, which perhaps suggest you know suggests uh, uh, he may be kind of a uh, kind of off base on that one. With, you know what we see in, the, in that final scene. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean a great episode for for Anthony, and 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 um, you know I also want to mention uh, in the case of uh, Mel. We were looking for directors, and Mel had worked on a show called Orphan Black, and Ooh. she had directed uh, a bunch of Second Unit, right? Right, Mel? Yes, that's correct. Yep. And and this episode required a fair amount of twinning, uh, which you know because we have the android and and Doctor Shaw in the same scenes, and and. Kind of, kind of the visual effects that required is is um, a little more complex, and it was good to have a director who knew what what you know who had that experience. Uh, despite that, this was a very challenging episode, and you know, as I was saying before we got on, it was it was it was a lot of work. It was crazy. I remember um, we we did a Friday day uh, where basically we 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 were up at we were there till like two. I yeah. think on on a on a Friday, one very long day. <laughs> yeah, but Mel was the calm in the eye of the storm. You always kind of were, you know, you always knew exactly what you wanted, and and you know, while I'm sure kind of lesser directors would have kind of lost their minds, you you were very <laughs> calm, and uh, you know, kudos to you. Yeah, I mean, it was. It's funny because when you say that, how like how this was like one of the bigger episodes. You don't really know that when you're in it because mm. you know you watch the show. You can't really tell what it takes to necessarily like make it until you're there. But yes, it was very big. And even with the daunting schedule because of the twinning, there was a very specific way that we had to approach shooting it. And you know, like, like changes, like at androids, changes are not easy changes. Um, yeah. It's a big deal. And so there was really precise scheduling that had to happen. And we had one day that became a super long day because we had a techno crane, which is essentially called a time vampire. It's a tool that uh, we use a lot of time to make things and it takes forever, which is us. Uh, <laughs> let me just uh, read, uh, guys, I, I want to let the audience know that uh, please don't, uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, please avoid super chatting today and just uh, try to focus on if you can uh, to you know participate with the GoFundMe for Bird. For bird of prey but uh thank you john burns and uh darius darius thank you for the popcorn sticker we appreciate it and john bird says natalie brown your character was so interesting to follow mm -hmm. unsure how much ptsd she got but she's interesting to watch thanks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be traumatizing to be alive dead alive <laughs> yeah, like you don't know i mean part of you is just so grateful to exist but at what price right Mm. And then you finally got a body. Uh, I would love to become an android, I guess, if I died and went to that weird world that you were creating yourself. Computer <laughs> heaven? Yeah, like There's computer. only so many plants you can plant, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm a little tired, and I actually tried to do this interview in my garden, and I'm like, no, this feels exactly mm. like Sarah's. <laughs> uh, it's so overgrown and overwrought. Um, but just back to Mel for a second, because I think I worked with Mel. Um, I can't remember what it was on, but you you were a script supervisor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right? we worked together. I was thinking about that today, actually, and we worked together on a a movie like a. Is it about vampires? Were you in a vampire movie that we worked on together? Oh, the first feature I ever did it was with um. It was uh, like sort of like an homage to the hunger with like a yeah, real was called lesbian vampires, all female vampires called the last, right. sect. the last sect. That's it. Yes. That's when we worked together in like 2005. Wow. I think. wow. But what's great about I mean, script supervisors, you know, like Mel too, or you're, you're so on it and you have to do the job of the director a lot of the time and you need to be able to also drive with a lot of different personalities. And so I feel like script supervisors can kind of really do it all because like they, they see the good, the bad, the ugly, the mistakes, you have to catch the mistakes. And I just, if I could just 
tell this one memorable story about that episode. Because Sarah was just in this bubble, we were able to just shoot all my scenes from several episodes in one day. It was just you know the one location, and so um, John Stead, who's one, he's the stunt or stunt coordinator who had started directing episodes, and so we were sort of banging out a bunch of scenes for Sarah, and I can't remember if it was like a scene from episode four, and then five, and then seven, and then you know, uh, so trying to keep up with those storylines. And Mel, to her credit, was off shooting like the big bad full episode with the technocrane. And John said, as a courtesy to Mel, I'd like, this is her episode. Let's see if we can wait to shoot this last scene when she gets here, but things were going over time. And so we were trying to figure out this very scene that you actually pulled the still from. It's Anthony and I just chatting about like, you know, our future and how sustainable the scenario is. And both Anthony and John, the director said, well, it's very clear to me that, you know, Natalie, Sarah's pacing and Anthony's just kind of sitting on the bed. And I was like, well, there's a lot of different ways to shoot a scene. There's no one right way. I, it wasn't the way I saw it, but let's try it. Like, I'm happy to try anything. So we start to block the scene with me, Sarah pacing, and Anthony kind of sitting there. And then Mel swoops in. She went from <laughs> one set to another and just in time. And she's like, okay, guys, thanks for blocking. So clearly the scene is Anthony pacing and Natalie, I see you on the bed. <laughs> Thank you. And Anthony, to his credit, said, this is why you need female perspectives. <laughs> it's just different, right? So like yeah. two men saw it one way clearly and two women were like, no, but it's obviously this way. And so that's just, I think, why it's really important just to have different perspectives, you know, mm. from men, women, BIPOC creators, different voices, representation. So it was really funny to like try the scene both ways. I think yeah. all way was better, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you tell that story because I remember that too. And I just came in and it's, you know, of course it's always like time is of the essence and everything. And I came in and, and I and I saw it. And my, it's funny because in my script, which I pulled out, my very first note for that scene is oh. Sarah's seated. I mean, he's unraveling. He's trying to figure things out. He's the one, you know, and you're and you're the calm. I've already thought about it for a while because I got nothing to do but sit yeah, there and yeah, think. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so I just love that story because to me it's just yeah, so representative of you know how we why we need different um, different voices and perspectives behind and in front of the camera. Uh, Melanie, uh, Jeff Bueller asked, how did Orphan yeah. Black prepare you for dark matter? Um, yeah, so, uh, hold on, just one second. Yes? Okay, uh, bad time. Can you come back in a few minutes? Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all right, we all know that one. You can, you can, uh, you can, so here we go. Here's here's you can take care of what you need. Aww. Guest, special guest star. Oh, no way. <laughs> I'll mute Star of War Villa. I muted uh, you, Melanie. Dark so Matter you're... season 20. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm back. Um, okay, so, uh, Sorry, what was the question? I apologize. <laughs> the question was, how did um, Oprah, uh, wait, uh, how did, how did Orphan Black, Black yeah. prepare oh. you for Dark Matter? Thanks well, Orphan this. Black prepared me for Dark Matter in one of the biggest ways, I guess, is twinning, obviously. Um, kind of efficient ways to shoot twinning uh, in storytelling with the, the tools uh, to use. It gave me like a really solid understanding of visual effects. And because on set, like the effects that we would do in that show were very intense and as a script supervisor i was the person who was always helping to describe what it was that we were doing to everybody else in the crew because no one really understood what was going on mm -hmm. and so i think like being that middle person and, and being like relaying it to everybody really helped me be calm in those crazy situations and you know I, in this episode specifically there was a lot to lead and there was a lot um of technical things that were new to a lot of people and i was able to just calmly to say the steps that we needed to get there. And I think that was kind of part of the, we had so much fun making it because everybody was clear on what our goals were. Can, can you elaborate a little bit more? Cause I mean, well, I guess you already mm -hmm. started to speak about it, but uh, Joe was saying backstage how, how challenging this episode was. Uh, did did yeah. you want to elaborate Joe? I know I'll let uh, Melanie elaborates and she was uh, in the thick of it. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing with twinning is you have the same actor playing two parts, right? And the challenge is how do you shoot that in a way that people believe that it's two different people? And, you know, we use a, a tool called the techno crane, which is essentially like a, a crane which can go on a dolly track and it has an arm that extends, but it's a computerized program. 
So you can you, so you can do camera movement with the same actor playing two different parts, but shoot those each as individual pieces, if that makes sense. So we'll shoot the first half with like Android, and then she would go and change for an hour and a half. We would shoot something else and come back and repeat that same camera move because it's recorded. It, it's like a memory, I guess, in the computer, and then do it with Dr. Shaw. Yeah, so here you cool. go. So this is a. Uh, and it was worth the wait because her hair was always so amazing. <laughs> oh, I know. Yes. So jealous of it. Well, yeah, and it's, I, I was, I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. no oh, go go ahead. ahead. Oh, oh no, I, oh. I was going to go on a different tangent, so you can. Uh... Okay, uh, I just want to quickly uh, ask uh, our meteor me meteorologist here, Katie, because she's watching the show. Uh, you know, she she has never watched it before. She's watching it every ep like now every episode. Okay. So, I wanted to get your take on it, Katie. What did you think of this episode? Was it crazy? <laughs> The entire time I was watching, I was like, oh, this must have been awful for the director to figure out with the twinning. I just, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even wrap my head around how many takes there must have been. But I, I love the intricacies that are starting to really extend out from the main plot. Like season one, it was, okay, I pretty much understand what's going on. They lost their memories, they're going to find their memories. Beyond then, it's just been incredible how the story has evolved in a non-predicted path that's my big thing with television shows right now is they're so predictable and this one is like no would never have guessed android was a real person and this was because of this and like it's it's a thoroughly enjoyable roller coaster ride so you like the plot twist i do i really do now it's it's so it i like it because it makes sense too like sometimes tv shows they just throw in plot twists for the sake of being like oh let's jar the audience and just like that and it's like no, mm -hmm. no this would make sense do you it's, happen to have your dark the, matter t-shirt to show melanie and natalie it's in the washing machine right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell them what it says what does it say it says dark matter this show gives me trust issues <laughs> because <laughs> it, does. it so does i'm just like i think i made it at the beginning of season two or something like that because <laughs> I just, I'll fall in love with the character. And then, no, look at that. Stabbed in the back. Killed space. This, this. It's like, Joe, stop killing the people I love. <laughs> I yeah. didn't see it coming either. I, I was uh, I was pretty surprised that uh, Android turned out to be, well, Android's maker. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like that, yeah. that, that idea that, um, and I really like the idea that she, like from what I understood, basically once she created Android because Android had a, a personality already, she didn't want to replace her like that consciousness with her own because she felt wrong doing it. So I thought that that was a really interesting aspect to the the, the storyline of of soul, the idea of soul, and the idea of um you know the, uh, that artificial artificial intelligence is not just uh you know just. AI, it, it's actually the the concept of soul that we ourselves, like our bodies, are machines in, in a way. So that you know, the soul that occupies our machines are also uh, valid in that sense. That we're because I think that you know, human beings are a form of machine as well. So it was very interesting to me. I thought that was really cool, Joe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's part of sort of the progression of, of this Android character who I mentioned early on in the series was was supposed to be really more of a background player. And because our scripts kept coming in short, I had to keep writing scenes, extra <laughs> scenes, and <laughs> Zoe just was so good. And I kind of fell in love with her performance. I ended up giving her a lot of these extra scenes also because, you know, we needed, it, it, the scenes would have to be shot second unit. and the other main characters were off meanwhile shooting main unit. And so we ended up, you know, uh, creating this huge arc for the character that just kind of built over time. And, and over time, you know, uh, you know, as I'm fond of pointing out, she became a member of the crew. And, and you know, it, when she finally took that seat at the mess hall table and joined them, it symbolically, she becomes part of the uh, the family. And it's something you kind of hit on it and really solidify in this episode with her conversation with six, with her conversation with with five, when she's, you know, practicing smiling and the conversation with, with three at the end. 
Well, um, and I mean, I think that we were all really waiting for that payoff in terms of like understanding how her and two were connected because, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of hinted at it throughout the entire series. And then this episode just kind of like drove it home and it was like, okay, this is, this is why. And that payoff was just, it was so well set up. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, it's really well done. And Melanie, like, I just want to reiterate what everyone said. I think that you did a freaking fantastic job directing this episode because I didn't, I didn't know this was not, like, one of your first times, uh, you know, directing. But uh, <laughs> for that, like, the, man, great job, really good. Oh, it was a really absolutely. good episode. Thank you. I mean, it's also blessed with a wonderful script. Like, I felt like there was such amazing uh, character moments. It was a big moment for Android. I love the Android character. You know, before I met for the show too, I, I, I was like, you know, usually you watch as many episodes as you can, but I had this like strict schedule. I think they called me on a Thursday night to meet for Monday morning. And I watched the whole first two seasons uh, over the course of like wow. three days. Wow. Yeah, I, I watched a few and then I was like, oh, now I need to know what happens. And then I had this strict schedule where I would like, put my son to sleep, watch three episodes. <laughs> get up in the morning <laughs> you know i just like i i mean i fell in love with the show so i i was directing the show as a fan of the show too which was such a great honor and of course joe wrote an amazing script yeah, yeah. it was very Melanie, good do you want to do you want to would you do you and joe want to tackle this question whose choice was dr shaw's accent uh that was actually a zoe palmer request it was yeah that's what i was yeah. that's what i remembered yeah and and i mean she, her, her background right? is british yeah i, I think so yeah. But she has family there. I'm not sure where. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was. But she that, can that do any great. accent as you can see. Yeah. Doesn't she do have an episode in a, in a bit of patois? Like she kind of goes yes. through all yeah, of she the. Does, she does. She does a Jamaican. She does <laughs> Aussie. Yeah, because when she first auditioned for the role, um, she's like, "I can do it. I can do the android with the British accent." Because for some reason, someone had done a, a, a British accent. And uh, and Jay Firestone, who's the president of Prodigy Pictures, was like, "Oh my gosh, that guy was great!" And I was like, "Try it with a British accent." And so she did. And as a joke, I was like, "Can you do it with kind of like a kind of you know Pat what Jamaican accent?" And she was like, "Sure." And she did. And so <laughs> I filed that away, and uh, and and she got to do it in uh, that same episode where we introduced you, uh, episode seven. Now I don't remember, Natalie, if I have to, if when you. Um, guess it in episode seven. If I told you, you would be the character would be coming back. At the I time. was going to ask well, that. Do you say coming back or or becoming bad? No, be, be coming back. Oh, coming time. back. Um, I remember you telling me I was going to be bad, and I was like, "What? Are we watching the same?" <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I I don't remember that as well as remember. I remember having a chat with you. And I would never have the audacity to be like, guess what I think is a good idea. But I was spitballing <laughs> with Anthony, well, where, where could you go within this sort of bubble that I've been sort of this bubbled corner I've been backed into? And I thought, if anything's possible here, you know, could I not be pregnant? You know, I'm <laughs> in this like sort of like, Seemingly like maternal bubble surrounded by life that I created in plants and I I'd sort of run out of things to manifest. I'm like, why not manifest a child? And I mentioned to Anthony and he said, I've been gunning for three to have like a kid somehow running around the spaceship. And <laughs> so he was like, and I, I hadn't spoken to him that many times, but like he was like, I'm behind this, let's go pitch it to Joe. And he said, Well, I, that's a really terrible idea. <laughs> I've got something else in mind. And when you told me, I was like, but but Sarah couldn't possibly, I don't know if I could possibly suddenly be the big bad. And uh, I don't know if I'm spoiling too much by saying that. Well, you're not spoiling it in that basically season four is not, uh, uh, we, we kind of got canceled before season four. But I mean, this is, this is kind of the last we see of Sarah, uh, sadly, but the plan, no! yeah. The plan was to sort of make her the big bad in season five, and, and that would have ah, offered a, a fascinating conflict for uh, for three. So, Natalie, I don't know if you know, but there was such excitement for your character on the show. Like, whenever we were shooting your scenes, you know, behind Video Village, it was all just like, oh, she's this character's really great. She's so great, and there was a lot of excitement. And I know Joe. Aww all these great plans and like yeah it was just really it was electrifying behind the monitor working with you that's that's, that's nice really to hear because i remember the fitting 
and I had seen like how badass all the other characters were dressed. Everyone's like in leather and boots with guns and belts. And I was really <laughs> excited. And they like, they put me in a brown cardigan and flats. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> loved it. He's like, I love that you're the antithesis to all of this. We're like the softer. I'm like, I know, but like the cardigan and I'm wearing flat shoes and everyone's tall. And anyway, but no, I know it was like a sort of, you know, I guess breath of fresh air playing that character. So I'm glad that other you, people. Your, your outfits got a lot nicer though, as kind of the. Oh, yeah, it wasn't it was nice. It just was like, it wasn't as tough. I, I was looking forward right. to like, you know. Yeah. A tough spacesuit well, and androids like her outfits and, were like incredible. But yes, but, I was actually heading in that direction. We suddenly were much yes. more refined, and tighter, and thicker, and it was going in a in a really more like severe direction. Eventually, you would have gotten there. You, you would, I would have gotten, gotten there. In the badass leather. That was the plan. Why? Why is she going to be evil, though? I don't understand. Was I, I guess wait. she was a good person. She is. Um, but sometimes when good people hang around, uh, I'm going to say bad people, but, but, you know, bad influences, of, yeah, they're, was uh, preservation, you know, Joe, like I was still trying it, to, it, it, it ultimately that. would have been about self-preservation and, uh, and the right. fact that, you know, you and your, your, your friends and your kind would be on the run and have to do what you have to do to survive. And that, we hint at that in um, the Victor character in this episode, uh, mm -hmm. in kind of the neck twist. And there's another moment where my wife was watching the show with me and she was like, what was going on with the other Android who was on the table? And he was saying, you know, it was wrong, it was wrong. Yeah. Was he just kind of losing it? Mm -hmm. And like, you, it's, it's not obvious, but when he was saying it was wrong, it was wrong, he was reacting to Victor killing the guy and Victor removes his chip to keep him from Tally. Revealing the truth. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of a, a subtle little thing, but uh, yeah, that. Uh, the, you know. the androids fighting for their humanity while being really inhumane. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but you, you do what you have to do to survive. And, and that would have been kind of interesting to get into because season four would have been the alien arc, and season five would have been the robot uh, or android ev uh, revolution. Oh, but, by the way, someone asked about uh, Suki's name. Uh, and actually that was kind of funny. Uh, the way the Android's name came about it is, uh, Zoe and I would just text all the time and she'd be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going over the script. Can I change this line to this line? And I'd be like, sure, or has a, you know, a better way to say this. And then we're talking about her, the Android's name. And she was like, well, you know, how are we gonna do this? And, and I said, well, why don't we generate a list of like, I think it was like 10 names. And then we would go back and forth and we would each eliminate one and kind of bring the the, the list lower and lower. And I, I got to find sort of the, uh, the the thread, but we kind of went back and forth. And then she had the final choice. I don't know who had, she had the choice. I think I think Chloe was there. Maybe Chloe and Suki were the last uh, were were the last picks, and she went with uh, she chose Suki. So that's how uh, we named the android Suki. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody else, uh, when they were watching this, uh, rem think about um, Patrick Stewart and Picard about becoming an android? When you guys, no, because nope, I haven't seen once. Picard. You see a lot I of parallels between other memory. series. I blocked that show from my memory recently. I, I didn't. I didn't do it to myself. I didn't watch it at all. So I was like, mm, same. No. Yeah, I didn't put myself through that misery. <laughs> anyway, I, <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> Where <laughs> to bring down the room? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, what was your favorite part about playing uh, Sarah? Um, I spoke on definitely some of the highlights. I mean, working with the cast and playing like a really unique character that sort of, you know, set herself apart from the world that she was in. Uh, I, I also happen to be from a small mining town in real life. So playing a girl from, you know, a small mining planet, it's like the girl next door or from the planet next door. Um, and yeah, just the sets, the cast, um, Joe's brilliant mind. I, I wish we could have yeah. continued a little longer, but, um, and the costumes were getting really great too. <laughs> I love the costumes too. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I I and, love all the weird uh, little lines in the episode, like with Android, um, especially like in the end where she's like smiling at three, and he mm -hmm. and she's and he's like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "I'm smiling." And you like it or something? And she's like, "He's like, yeah, it's actually a pretty good." <laughs> like, and it was like the worst smile ever, <laughs> oh but it was gosh. so sweet yeah. that he was like, "Oh, you're it's yeah, good job." <laughs> it's okay. And when she drinks the whiskey, and it's just like, <laughs> "Nope." Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh! Butterfly. I think I had a butterfly in the room. That was like the craziest oh, thing that we manifest, the, right? The, the digital effect. butterfly. Yeah. That's what made me think. If I can manifest a butterfly, why not a baby? Like some company. That's what three was, though. If it had a baby on the <laughs> when ship, he, when he, Anthony when was he, it. He found the time to dial in or dial up. I mean, I was surprised they didn't give so. you a dog or something or a cat. Yeah. Yeah, like, like there's a line where I say, like, I, yeah, like time I, is a I, construct, I, and sometimes it felt like minutes and sometimes like years mm -hmm. alone. I think we can all relate to that in this pandemic, you know, the yeah, isolation. I, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's funny because actually the episode before this, when you have the conversation with two and you're talking about being lonely and isolated, a cameo, my wife was like, I mean, it's like you're commenting on, on quarantine, on, on the pandemic. And it's, it's I said the same weird thing, how yeah. How sort of eerie the parallels. Yeah, it was yeah. literally the same exact thing that was going mm -hmm. on with everybody that year. And we were like, now we all know how you feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being trapped. <laughs> Only so many plants, not going to cut it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> although, although, to be fair, I probably would have gotten you a dog before I would have gotten you. You were right? kid, having a Just kid like, like running around, around the ship. Yeah. It went from plants to adopting pets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you buy a boyfriend. I could have yeah. manifested another man. <laughs> I mean, no? I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how having a kid them. would work. I mean, basically, you're there. You're taking care of the kids and then it reaches a point where the kids kind of get on your nerves so you can just kind of snap your fingers and the kid's Bye. gone. And then when, <laughs> when three comes back, you got to snap your fingers and the kid's back. Right. Every That's mom life of a grandparent. Yeah. yeah. Plays into the villainy of it all. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Loki. Uh, I will take care of that. Make sure that gets to the fund. Uh, guys, if you, uh, if you can, uh, thanks. Thanks so much, Loki. Um, yeah, just please uh, um, dir go directly to the GoFundMe instead of super chatting tonight. Thanks guys. Um, appreciate it, Loki. Um, and um, I, now, Katie, I wanted to ask you, did you think at any moment that three would never accept um, uh, Sarah? No, because he's too much of a softy. <laughs> I instantly, I feel like he can put away all of his prejudices. Android definitely helped like throughout the series. Like you see, he starts to be like, okay, well, she's different. Don't make me say it. Like, and so I think he's starting to realize that not all androids are created equal and some of them are special. Like, mm. you know, you got Andrew, you got Sarah. I see. I totally thought because I also have trust issues with the show. Um, for, for some reason, I thought that you were going to like somehow like kill her during the transfer, like during the mind transfer. Yes. Like it's not going to take or something oh my like gosh, that. Yes. So I was like, oh, he's, he's probably going to just kill her off because he wants three to go off the deep end because he probably would once he finds out she's like cool. dead. Yes. And then that didn't happen. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then, yeah. Who has a heart? <laughs> he's not just out to mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. He that we, uh, that's evil. We, we uh, Joe. Now we know Joe is not doesn't like prequels, so we're not going to go get we're not going to go get a prequel from Joe. But uh, he revealed a lot uh, through these uh, memory uh, these memories in the android. Uh, he revealed a lot about you know earlier moments in the in the uh, yeah in, uh, Raz's in, history. In fact, the first the first one was I think a reference to um, I think it was episode three hundred three uh, earlier this season where Five was talking to. Um, um, uh, uh, Mishka's character, and and he mentions I think uh, Jasper and and another character, and uh, who were members of the crew. And Five asks, "What happened?" Oh, Jasper and Shrike. What happened to Jasper and Shrike? And he says, "I think Portia happened to them." 
And indeed, we actually see what happened to them in, in this little flashback yeah. scene where, uh, you know, three is uh, his usual kind of non committal self. I love self. that line. I was rooting for non, you. Yeah, non committal and eating, yeah. a typical yeah. sort of uh, yes. Anthony Lemke fashion. <laughs> she's like do you have a pro did you, do you have a problem or do you have something to say and he's like i was rooting for you like whatever mm -hmm. it was great that was a great line <laughs> <laughs> this, this was fun to shoot we did this all in one take actually this whole fight little this little flashback yeah. Oh, really yeah wow it was all one shot that was, that was dope and of course uh, anthony lemke is just sitting there eating <laughs> <laughs> Even when his tray gets knocked, he's still like just eating his bread, doing his best <laughs> bread pit. Yeah, <laughs> he's cold. I mean, she she not only beats the shit out of them, but then she executes them afterwards, and then steals their shit for good measure. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all in front of an android. He's just like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess like what when I, I was trying to piece the like the 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 pieces together. So like after this. Like, cause she becomes like so badass. It seems kind of weird because when she was with Suki, when she was with, mm -hmm. with the, with, with, well, she, when she was with the other, like the real one, mm -hmm. uh, the real one, uh, right. the human <laughs> version, uh, she seemed to be very loving and- Yes, not actually she was absolutely loving because she was among friends and people she trusted. But um, before that, when you see kind of the flashback, she mentions her escape from the uh, the lab. Mm -hmm. And you remember the flashback we saw, she ended up killing everybody on that space station when she when she escapes. And then mm -hmm. she she finds yeah. Dr. Shaw is reunited and they have kind of a loving relationship. And then when she goes on the run, she has to sort of put up that shell again and, and uh, needs what she ha does, what she has needs to do to survive. Much like sort of like you know we're kind of uh, foreshadowing uh, the androids uh, in, in 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 season five. Okay, yeah, because that's what I was trying to piece together, like why she kind of loses her shit and goes and becomes like a criminal because mm -hmm. you know it goes from like she was really loving and having a you know whatever, and then all of a sudden she's you know killing people and like stealing a spaceship, and then she's crazy. Well, she, well, she's not crazy. I mean, like I said, she, she does what she needs to do to survive, but you kind of juxtapose that scene um, where she sort of kills these two guys and takes their ship with the scene with Five where um, she essentially oh, she, thanks okay. Five and says, look, you know, I, I wasn't really on board. Really, I didn't really want to have you on board. We saw those flashback scenes in previous episodes where she's yeah. like, I don't want her on my ship. Mm -hmm. And now she actually is big enough to say thank you because it means a lot to her. So you do see, I always love like, you know, showing those flashes of vulnerability for, for these various characters. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, like the big one was like, as I mentioned, sort of um, Three's relationship with Sarah what was such a huge step towards kind of rehabilitating him and making him such a, like a beloved character. I rehabilitated him. I was just having a flashback of the flashback where I like find him wounded and half dead, and I literally had to drag his <laughs> yeah on, like a makeshift sled yeah. and, and nurse him back to hell. I actually loved shooting that. Um, I think that might have been my first day. Was it? No, it wasn't. No, it was second day. But it was with Bruce McDonald, another yeah. director who's a legend in Canada and. Every time he'd work on a show, it was never the episode I was in, or he. I would I would go and do second unit. I'm like, I feel like he's avoiding me. And then <laughs> I finally worked with him on Dark Matter, which was very, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. lifelong yeah. dream come true. And then yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. Uh, Je Jeff Beeler asked Joe. Uh, Shrike was the captain, I think, right? Well, he there was really no captain. Um, Jasp, um, Jasper was the uh, was the big guy, bigger guy, and he had won the ship in a uh, poker game. Uh, so I mean, he really had no, I guess you know, uh, no real attachment to it. Shrek was the guy in the uh, in the foreground. Gotcha. And let's put up a new a few more images and thank you everybody uh for thank donating uh, we're getting closer and closer to the uh, mark for bird i appreciate it we all appreciate it um 
Yes, thank you everyone for your generosity. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being stuck in a, in a room for years and years and you don't leave because you don't have the right wheelchair? It's, uh, it's insane. Okay. Um, well, I think Natalie can kind of imagine it because yeah. she's stuck in that <laughs> crazy hologram. And she's yeah. not able to go anywhere. I had to imagine it. And like, like I said, I feel like after these last 16 months, we all know a little bit more what that can be about. Mm -hmm. Either like, you know, the loneliness you can feel or being trapped with people that you don't necessarily want to be next to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't know any two people who didn't quite have, you know, their own challenges, but I can't imagine anything like uh, Bird of Prey is going through. So I donated and tipped, I donated and then tipped $3. I was trying oh, to keep thank three you. as sort oh, of a current you, theme. Thank we you, honor our favorite character. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had people that were very close to me end up uh, wheelchair bound after COVID. So um, yeah, I feel like whatever we can do to help one another out right now is really important. And whether it's like making good TV to get us through the tough times and make us feel a little less alone and things like this, to be able to see so many people at the same time is the most <laughs> seen in a while. Yeah. Uh, this is a really great thing you're doing, guys. This is great. Uh -huh. It, um, that was a really good I, a good point with the uh, people interacting and stuff and with TV shows being a huge help during the pandemic. I feel like uh, we're going to have a lot more people at Comic-Cons coming up because a lot more people found shows that just made them feel better. The mm -hmm. show included. Yeah, true. That's a good point, Katie. We, there will, I think there will be more people down the road at Comic-Con. The nerds will take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a question, if you don't mind, uh, for both Joe and Natalie, because we have three. We got the softer side of three that needs to be pulled out. Who came up with a larger portion of Sarah's personality? Was that just your acting completely, or did Joe write that in, or is it a mix? It's, it's always a collaboration, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, as I said earlier with, with Zoe's performance, um, it just kind of fed the character and it was, a, you know, very symbiotic relationship. It's the same with, with, uh, with the Sarah character. I mean, you know, we wrote the script and Natalie came in and, and made the, the role her own. And then based on her performance, you, you know, you tailor the scripts accordingly and then you know ultimately this these scripts are not dictation you know the, there, there's always room to uh you know to, to tweak and improvise i mean that's a dream come true yeah you obviously get given the character and i like to honor the writer as much as possible um but then just by virtue of you being you you're always going to bring yourself and then it becomes a new thing and uh and i know that a lot of writers when they see what an actor does with a part like Zoe and you want to write more for them. So I'm wondering what was it about me that made you go, you know, I think she's really evil. Really <laughs> 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 exhausted the nice Sarah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, wouldn't you have loved to play the uh the uh the big bad? I mean uh I was I terrified when you told me that. Really? But I also know that if it doesn't terrify me at least a little, it's not mm. worth doing. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I could play Sarah like, you know, sweet and lonely and forlorn and loving mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she needed to be challenged like I needed to be challenged. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was open to it, but I was quite terrified of what you had in store. Mm -hmm. Would you I, you're actually unusual okay? because Go ahead. Oh, oh, would she have actually been like ended up being good at the end, or would you have just like off her like everyone well, I'm not, else? I'm not, I'm not gonna, Don't tell us. I, I, well, no, I uh, I'm, I'm holding on hope for that that mini series down the line. So uh, yeah, right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I'd already oh. thought to myself it would only be it might seem like you're doing a really dastardly thing, but ultimately it's to save everybody. So I'd already had justified in my mind it's something like to sacrifice <laughs> you to save the rest. Mm. And so yeah. we've had several actors and actresses on. They come on and, and they're nice, wonderful people. It's a, a testament to the show how wonderful everybody really is. But almost universally, you're the first one who, when they say they, they get to play the bad person, they are all over it. They just love it. And you're, you've got the hesitation and fear. That, 
That's interesting. Yeah, but it also, you know, what you resist persists. So I've continuously been thrown some really dark cards. And so I realized it's not something you can shy away from. And yeah, you're right, a lot of actors love it, but no bad guy ever thinks they're actually a bad guy, right? And it's a lot more, I think, fun to try to justify. You can't just be evil for the sake of evil, even though some parts are kind of written for that point, but it's an actor's job to obviously, you know, no person ever thinks they're doing that. They think they're justified in all their actions. So, um, but I don't know why, for some reason, I felt really protective of Sarah and I just couldn't imagine like such a 180. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll happily play your big bad any gay Joe. I'm not afraid. Well, I appreciate that. It would, it would have, it would, you know, uh, added more to her character. And and ultimately, I mean, I'm 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 never about sort of like the these straight villains. Always like kind of the you know to see those vulnerabilities in in the complicated even, villains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like four. He's so complicated. Yeah. Yeah, but again, oh, yeah, and this yeah. is like another example of sort of like those small instances and and kudos to, to Mal. I mean, um, one of the things that I, I that I really look for in a director or when I think a director has been successful is their ability to sort of capture those kind of smaller character moments. And mm -hmm. and you, we see that in, in all those moments with uh, with um, with the android and, and, and you know, the, that that her conversation with six or her conversation with with um, with Rio, which kind of interesting, it's it's a it's a conversation that you think is uh, the intent is to kind of humanize her, but really you're humanizing uh, uh, the Rio Ishida character because this is before he turned into four, you know, when he was sort of big bad uh, Rio Ishida, and uh, you know people notice he actually tends to smile more as uh, Rio Ishida than he did, did as uh, four. <laughs> There's always yeah, little did. subtle things to put in there for sure. Yes. I, I remember in this episode too, in the, I think in the early version of the script, uh, three left uh, Sarah at the hard drive very easily. Like when, the, when the, the boom was happening and they were trying to run out. And I remember saying like, would you just let it go? Like there has to be some that like attachment there that it's more mm -hmm. of like a moment, I think, to make that decision. So I remember we built that up too in the episode, which was like really, yeah, from the beginning, I just really felt like, we, we, and we talked a lot about it, I remember too, about, you know, like I love working with actors too, and we talk about how you know they feel in, in character, and like we kind of are able to collaborate on those sort of moments together. Hmm. Um, Another good moment too was five talking with the caretaker android. I don't remember his name, and a lot of times she gets into action. Looks like I'm being booted. Oh no! I'm off, aren't I? Oh, There's a chance right we can hear you. You're here. Oh. oh. That was it. Oh, okay. Yes. His, his internet. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the, the, the character uh, of Chase was played by uh, actor Kyle Mack, who is a phenomenal actor. And it's one of those cases, again, like the Ed, Ennis Esmer character, uh, Wexler, where you bring in a character and you, ki you know, and the, the, the character dies, but the actor is so good. <laughs> you bring them back because it's science fiction, and and, yeah. and that was the deal. And and you know we had plans for uh, for for Kyle Max Chase as well um, as part of that Android storyline. And sadly, we didn't get a chance to follow through. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's funny. I was watching this episode, and 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 uh, for me, I love all the fun episodes, but it's those smaller character moments that that always kind of speak to me. And again, sort of kudos to to, to Natalie, kudos to. to to Mel and, 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 and the cast for really delivering on them. Uh, but more than any episode I found after watching this episode, uh, I kind of relived the anger uh, at the cancellation. So it's kind of interesting, kind of interesting. I did too, Joe, I did oh, too. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Not was this like, uh, Sarah, but what's wrong with the prequel? You don't like prequels in general? I don't like prequels in general because they're just covering information that, uh, uh, that really we, we already know. We already know how it's going to turn out. I mean, I, I like um, flashbacks. I mean, we did a lot of flashbacks uh, and kind of filled in the gaps on, on the characters' backstories while moving our story forward. So that I don't mind. But if you kind of set a series before the events of, of let's say, uh, the pilot, I always find those kind of like, uh, kind of dramatically unsatisfying for me personally. I agree, Nate. 
God, yeah, I agree. Mate. I agree. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. ah. You see some of the stuff they put out, and then you just realize that they decided to cancel Dark Matter. It's like, what? Were you on crack? Like, yeah. are you kidding me? You produce this over this? Like, it's frustrating. Very. Mm. Mm. Must be did you guys? Did you guys know in right? this episode? Like, did you at this point? Did you know that you? you no, were we didn't know like until. That? Like after the show, uh, I mean, after we'd wrap production on the show. In fact, actually, really? are we, I think we were like, we, we were like the second most watched scripted show on sci-fi. Uh, and, and, and actually we were airing, we were, I, I don't know if we actually aired the finale, but we were, we were doing well ratings wise. So I, so I assumed we were coming back and we had, we'd had the, the season four writers room and, and uh, we, we had certain scripts in play and we had the plan in place and actually moved from Vancouver to Toronto for what I assume would be the last two seasons of the show. And the day we arrived, I remember I was out for lunch. I was having dumplings with, uh, with the Kemi and I got the call from Jay to say, Oh, uh, sci-fi uh, channel canceled us. And I was like, Oh, I thought I got it interesting. And, and like, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, I get shows get canceled all the time. And, you know, I've already discussed why I think that, you know, if a network picks up a show and they're asking audience to invest their time in the show, the least they can do is offer them an ending in the way of a movie or something. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I guess I was kind of annoyed to be quite honest because uh, no, no one has produced more hours of television for the sci-fi channel than I have. Uh, I think close to Is like true? 300, yeah, over 300 hours. No, no, no other producer, scripted television, no, no other producer has come close. And the fact wow. that I didn't get a call that basically our request for a wrap up movie went unanswered. Um, this is why basically I kind of went off, uh, so to speak, it was my Italian temper. Anyways, um, <laughs> you, know, there, you know, I get it, you know. I would have too, it's Joe. completely oh, wow. justified. The, the economics yeah. don't make sense. And, and uh, but I just thought the way they uh, they handled it was kind of uh, lame, but. Yeah. Anyways. Well, knowing you too, because you have all these people, it's not just you being disappointed. You have all the crews, you have the directors, you have all the actors, they all got let down and you represent them. I, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. gotta be frustrating. Yeah, yeah, and I've always been very protective of of my my cast and crew. So uh, that, that's exactly it. that had a lot to do with it too. Like, no uh, loyalty, yeah. no loyalty. I mean, not from here, from them. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could have at least given a call. Like that's the rudest part is when you hear it from someone else. Yeah, yeah. Well, is Netflix not interested in continuing it? Or what's you the, know, Netflix is kind of an interesting situation because they're subscription based and actually we went to them, but they don't really pick up shows that they already own because in their mind, they already have the subscriber uh. base. So, um, for instance, they, they picked up a Lucifer because it was, I think, a Fox show that was canceled. So by picking up Lucifer, they brought in that Lucifer fan base, but they already had the uh, Dark Matter fan base. So, although I would argue now, I mean, you know, I keep on mentioning what one of the things I would like to do is pitch them a Dark Matter miniseries. I think sort of time enough has passed that uh, maybe that would be of interest to them. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think Netflix is the home because they own or, or they, they have all three seasons already. So, and it's tough for another uh, streamer to pick up a show that is essentially owned by another streamer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you said makes uh, complete sense, though. So, yeah, it's they're trying to bring in people. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I mean, I mean, me for this summer, I'll put together a pitch once I get some of this other stuff uh, out of the way. And I'll I'll keep you posted. Well, because I know only, that I... for that show, Sense Eight, they got canceled, and then the fans there was enough attention that Netflix gave them a movie, and so then mm -hmm. they got to wrap up the story with the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I'm just hoping for, and that was their own content already too. Mm -hmm. But I was just hoping for something could be possible there. Yeah, I mean, I, I still hold that hope. I, like I said, for a mini series, I think would be would be perfect. Ideally, seasons four and five. But uh, I will uh, I'll settle for a mini series. 
Melanie, I, I put up this image uh, in case you wanted to maybe walk us through the filming of this, uh, like a scene like such as this. Sure. You know what's really funny about that actually is that uh, in this scene, so because of the nature of us using the techno crane and we were doing the twinning bit here, we were shooting two scenes this way and it was very specific in the way that it needed to be lit and set up. And so I, I don't know, I don't, can't share my screen, but I can show you my iPad. But this is your screen actually with Lego. Is what you're seeing there. This was my storyboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and so I, that. so here's, I think I have a bit picture of like the overhead. Here's um, let me see if I can see this one, where I basically yeah I brought in uh, my Lego to show. <laughs> here we go. This was the set. <laughs> yes. Right, here, here we go. There you That's go. That's great. That's um, fantastic. Yeah, so it, just a layout where the blocking was for everybody. Um, that's the bed and the sit up. And let's see if I go this way. <laughs> that green thing is the giant wall of light, but that's how our DP would light with a giant wall. So uh, yeah, and so what I did is I basically brought in Lego and everyone was laughing. I'm like, listen, it's the most clear way for us to walk through um, all this because it was really important on where each character was. Mm -hmm. Right. So and are your I, are your kids on the payroll as assistant directors? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't know. I am a huge Lego buff. Like I love Lego. You know, as soon as the pandemic first hit and they were shutting the whole city down, I went right onto Craigslist and found like the old Ninjago, the big uh, Ninjago City set. So I went and bought that from somebody used. It was a five thousand piece set, and I built that during the pandemic. And then the pandemic wow. first, it kept going on. So then they released the new Ninjago Garden City set. So I got the new one and I built that. Like, I love, I love Lego. It's uh, so Lego awesome. and Playmobil are the two things I just I absolutely love. So it's a great tool for my job, which is also helpful. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Wow. Um, yeah. I grew up with Legos, so that's freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my like a goal would be to like if I had whatever, if I was a uh, won the lottery, I would have like a room of all these specific Lego sets. I just love something about the intricacy of building it and the sound of the Lego when you're like moving it around. That should be like a white noise to fall asleep for me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there anything else you want to say about this scene then? Um, about no, the I, I would. Yeah, I would say this scene. Like, how does it? I think this scene we started on, we were we were tighter in this scene. And it was important for us to be able to have these two characters in the same shot, obviously. And there was this, I don't remember this scene exactly. But yeah, I just remember this is one of our, our more complicated scenes that we shot. This is the day that we went until like, I think two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. which, was a, which was new. But, you know, it was lovely. Like, I think this is one of our first days too, working with Dr. Shaw, wasn't it? Joe, do you remember? Yeah, I just, they, 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 I just remember this was like a very tough night. Yes. I just, yeah, yeah. The set was also a very large set. So this was a set built for this episode and it was a mm -hmm. two story set that was basically wrapped all in plastic, but needed to be lit from the outside in. So the lighting alone was like a huge job for this. And then we had this huge wall of TVs up there. It was, a, this was a big, it was a, bit, a big sequence. Yeah, this one was like, like I remember the production design in this this episode was uh, 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 quite different, shall we say? I mean, basically there was this, and then there was the uh, underground of the of the space station that we shot. I think across the street from our studio at uh, what was it? it? It was like a game center or something. Oh, that wasn't and, this. Yeah. Th this was at the um, where they shoot big. No, 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 this this yeah, this was on at the studio. But yeah. the scene, the the, uh, the where where um, uh, Anya's uh, owner catches up with them and uh, Victor snaps yeah. his neck was at that uh, kind of gaming uh, center. Yeah, it's like a whirly ball court, yeah. <laughs> indoor mini golf, yeah. and uh, yeah, something else. Yeah, the weirdest place in the world. Yeah, Easy, and, I think it was fact, yeah, yeah, and uh, and and uh, Sarah got her new body in. Uh, what was it like a, a laser, a laser tag. tag thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I was thinking, yeah, it was a late. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was a challenge. You know, yeah, that was a challenge. So kudos yeah. to you again. 
I know. Melanie, and just said, we we have a couple of creative people in the chat. Uh, we have a lot of uh, you know uh, filmmakers as well. Mm -hmm. And Time Profit is asking if Zoe is in front of a green screen. In the yeah. So uh, actually, Zoe is not in front of a green screen at all for this. So when we shot this shot. I don't remember, let's say we did the Android shot first. So we would do a reference pass where we had Android as Android and we would have somebody else laying in this bed um, as a reference and we recorded a take using the Techno Dolly. Then once we were happy with where everybody was placed, we took out the person who was laying in the chair and did the whole scene. So the actors had to base, they had to take an eye line to Dr. Shaw laying on the bed and, and in this scene, she also gets up from the bed and she walks over and she goes to like the table and like there's a lot of movement that happens as well. So they had to like, we had to practice all the eye lines. And then, so we did the, the second pass of the scene with Android and nobody in that chair. So they're all acting to nobody basically. And we did that because as you can see her feet overlap with her in the background. And then, then we uh, left this shot. The character went to go change to become Dr. Shaw. Then we did the same scene again with the actors now, and we had Dr. Shaw in there and nobody for Android. And they would have to, then we would have somebody reading the off camera lines for Android and they have to look over to her. So in a way it's like, uh, it's a continuity <laughs> mind melt to make sure everyone's <laughs> looking at the right place when there's nobody there. And in the end we comp all those three parts together and. Here you go. Yeah. And, and something to, to point out here, this was all Melanie with an assist from uh, our VFX supervisor, Lauren Bancroft Wilson. So when I write the script, I will write, I mean, I will certainly not offer any detail, uh, you know, of this scope. I'll basically say, you know, there, yeah, Dr. Shaw is lying on the, on the, on the table and everyone is around her in a, kind of a very general sense. And then it's up to the director, in this case, Melanie, to make it work mm -hmm. in the visual sense. And so, right, Melody, so many kudos for that because I'd rather do taxes any day of the week than do something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, but I mean, the other thing too is when the character, so you have to shoot all the parts with Android first, and then Android's going to go change, and her change took about like an hour and a half. So, as a as crew, we need to keep shooting, we need to shoot something during that time too. So, we would have the camera on the Techno Dolly be a camera that's now like locked off and or you know, not using that, and we would use the B camera to shoot coverage of like two and three here. And we would start, not, not the three's not here, sorry, but we would then shoot coverage while the other actress was changing. Again, unfortunately a challenge, because of course as an actor, it's always great to have the other actors opposite you. But we were forced in this situation sometimes to use stand-ins. Um, and sometimes I love to read the off camera lines because I'm really in the scene. I feel like I can be, <laughs> I will be the scene. And so, yeah, it was a lot, a lot of pieces and it was a, a mind melt, but I would rather do this than taxes. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was having um, a good hair day there. <laughs> you always have a good hair day. You've That's always had amazing day. hair. Wow. Mm. That's a great shot. Oh, Anthony. This is really how they call it movie magic. You get people that love the show. You get the whole crew that loves the show. And, and it, it really does come off as magic. I, I can't say enough of how well you guys did. Bree just yeah. looks happy. Like the number of times you just seem genuinely, wholly happy. It just oh, puts a smile on your face. But it's also the way he looks at her. Look how three looks at her. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> it's so it's great that you guys it. were friends beforehand. Uh, and I'm sure it makes it easier to work. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's why, you know, Anthony, you know, and thank you to Joe, because you know, nepotism doesn't always necessarily work i think i've tried recommending someone once because it worked before but then it wasn't quite the right fit in a new role and it's always nerve-wracking like people think oh you, you're so lucky or be so flattered that you didn't have to audition it's like no i like to audition so that i know what it is they liked about what i did and you know you have that as a reference point um but in this case because i worked with anthony a few times we already had that built-in history that i know we have you know and so um and obviously she's you know, doing her best to try to jog his memory and remind him of what they once were. And I guess they did a pretty convincing job, but thank you to Joe for having me stick around. And also thank you to Five for actually resurrecting you and making it possible. Um, 
But yeah, this is one of those instances where yeah, it definitely worked out having that history. Was, it let me just throw this all. Let me just throw this idea out to the Stargate because we have a lot of Stargate fans here, obviously because of Joe. Um, anybody see anybody else see Natalie as maybe a Tokra or maybe a, another role in Stargate? <laughs> Who knows? Oh yeah, absolutely. What would you see? What would you cast her as, Joe, if you needed to cast her in the Stargate universe? You know what? I could see her as a as, as a as a team member, potentially a medic. Hmm. Yeah. You know, basically a you know sort of a uh, obviously someone with military experience, so you can get kind of see the kind of the badass side of uh, of, of Natalie Brown, and yet. Uh, you know, the, she's she's a trained medic, so she's the kind of compassionate side of oh, Natalie Brown. Yeah. I'm ready for this because the kid right. who was played in Clarice was twins, so it was my first time with a technocrane. Mm -hmm. uh, they played a one sister was a very dirty doctor, <laughs> uh, and by dirty I just mean like just dark, 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 uh, sociopathic. And uh, and then the other twin sister was a nurse who was really you know nurturing, so. Yeah, it was fun to play both sides, oh. and it's always fun to play twins, it turns out. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, anything else about uh, Sarah's backstory? Or maybe, Sarah, um, maybe I think uh, you will, will have to wait for episode 12. I don't want to reveal anything because uh, uh, Katie has not watched past this episode. So, ah, yes, yes there, is a, there is a big reveal in episode 12. Ooh. Oh, Sarah, yes. yes. Cool. Yes, yes. Awesome. Uh, we have uh, we have um, uh, a lot of. Uh, well, let me put those up. We have some behind the scenes pictures that Joe shares with us. Oh uh, right. so, Katie's got um, her uh, cat. This and is Radar. Oh, oh, radar. Hi, radar. radar. He was oh, chewing on my legs, so I had to pull him up. <laughs> you want to go say hi? Go say hi. I Usually, so just at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> he. Is the fluffiest boy. <laughs> you can't show so that on the internet. <laughs> yes, he's just a few months away from getting a little sibling, which I don't know how he's going to handle that. Mm. <laughs> it's all about the introduction. You got to introduce them yeah. in a certain yeah. way. Yes. Or well, else in, a, in a what neutral location for the both yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get his uh, actual sister from the farm I got him from. So once the sister is born, if the mama cat has to hit menopause. It's a, it's a weird situation, but we're hoping. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Joe, now you're absolutely sure you want to share these after hours pictures of Natalie and Melanie at the Whiskey oh. Club? Yeah, I'm sure you everything. Yeah. 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 Did, did, did you guys join the whiskey club? Were you there? I, Mel, you were yeah. there, weren't you? I, yeah, I was there. I joined the whiskey club. And Natalie, did you did you uh, swing? I by? would love to, but I was not present. Yeah, oh, yeah, but it's never too late. Soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Japanese whiskey. Yeah, well, all kinds of whiskey, and uh, but uh, Japanese. Uh, so you know, I was going to say we were talking about wardrobe, and I was like, but I remember you wearing that amazing uh, red. Uh, uh, coat, and then I realized, oh, actually, no, that was your coat. That was my coat. Yes. Oh, look how good you look at this picture. I think I, it was the uh, Canadian Screen Week, so I think I'm wearing a Canadian Screen Week shirt. Yeah, Canadian Movies Kick Ass, I think it says. Is that Canadian what Movies that? Kick Ass, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, that was oh. fun. And I bought that, I bought that red coat from, um, I did the first all-female horror anthology called XX. And it went to Sundance, which was like crazy and exciting. And the whole poster was like red lips and double X's for the female chromosomes. And so that was my trying to stay warm while walking a you know winter red carpet Sundance. That was back. Nice. Yeah, fun memories. Remember the days when we could travel and watch films together? Yeah. You know, I was thinking oh with the Whiskey Club, <laughs> at a, we should do that at a convention. Just have a dark matter room, label it Whiskey Club, and just everyone brings their own whiskey into a convention. What could possibly go wrong? That'd be great. <laughs> so this, this is this is how Mal ran the uh, prep. Okay, <laughs> right there, that, that's that's uh, Robbie David, uh, uh, who's our uh, unit manager. And uh, this is how sort of Mel ensured things like, she was like, I need the techno crane. And Rob was like, I don't know if we can afford the techno crane. <laughs> and she was like breaking the bottle and like, you're getting that techno crane. And 
and she got the techno crane. Okay, I take that back. This looks funner than taxes. Yeah. <laughs> that picture is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But believe it or not, Robbie and I are good friends now too. You know, so he, yeah. he, he took it okay. It's, it's okay. That's awesome. No unit managers were cut in the. Uh, <laughs> of this photo. That's a great picture. What are you holding? Is that like a giant trimmer? No, I think it was like a taser device. No, it was oh, a broken a bottle. bottle. That's what it was. Yeah, it's a oh, broken what? Yeah. Oh, not from space. That was yeah. It was for the fight, I think, when that when they break a bottle. And so yeah. it was during a prop show and tell, actually, was what it was. And then yeah. we just had a bit too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's face is yeah. really yeah. committed. All right, and there you are for that. Uh, yeah. Talking, talking the actors through their uh, that android uh, flashback scene. Yeah. When I direct, I love to be right there with the cat. I like to be really close when we're blocking, not like far away. Mm -hmm. so running through it. And then this was the only scene then with uh, with Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to get him in the episode. Joe, we have a lot of new people. Uh, we have some people in the chat who have not been with us weekly today. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you want to say to, to new Dark Matter fans, and how can they support you for a Dark Matter Season 4? Is there anything um, you want to say to them? Well, welcome aboard the Raza. You can actually follow me on uh, Twitter, Baron Destructo, where I offer uh, behind-the-scenes uh, videos and, and, and photos from Dark Matter, and most recently, actually, Stargate. Uh, and I will. I'll let you guys know. I will keep you updated on uh, my quest to get us a uh, a miniseries eventually. And I'm Thanks putting Joe's joining. Twitter in here. Make sure everybody is following Joe. And yeah, and Joe's posting a lot of cool stuff, like constantly. Yeah, and if you like the Twitter community going on there, yeah, Joe, I think of you daily when. Um, you had a list of pet peeves, unrelated to your show and your writing, but a list of pet peeves that are <laughs> so spot on. I don't even remember. All, all of mine, and one of which, top of the list was the stickers. And oh so my God. <laughs> that I made a proto sticker from my Apple, I think of you. <laughs> I hate it. I'm like, why, why do so they have dumb. to put those So on? dumb. And you're trying to sort of peel it you, and, and sort of you, you try to sort of adjust the peeler so that you can actually just kind of peel, peel it right off. And But, you know, the, the, sometimes the stickers are too big, so you, you only catch, you know, most <laughs> of it, but the other part is like, yeah, so it's stuck it. to, the, to the peeler. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, don't, don't get me started now. <laughs> the whole list is amazing, but that one like, yeah. I'm reminded daily. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, you know, I always think about you, Joe, too, because you're an avid reader, and I'm so impressed with how many books you you read a year. I think about that every time I pick up a book. I'm like, I'll never be close to Joe's numbers, but <laughs> I I really need to pick up. I get get back into reading. I, oddly, because of the, you would think that because of the pandemic, I have more time to read. But um, you know, I keep on saying when I'm in production, I read a lot more because. I'm working and I know what needs to be done. When when that gets done, then reading is 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 kind of free time. But now instead, you know, when I'm when I'm reading, I think to myself, I really should be developing something else. I you know, there's time I could be spent working. So, you know, either it's uh you know, so I, I feel guilty actually reading now. Oh, by the way, here's uh here's another uh, here's uh awesome shot of your uh and and on, yeah. on top on the top you have they look like little uh, little hats but you have uh, the letter so so uh, Android is A and I think six is six and uh, or no, Victor six is and Shaw. Yeah, yeah Victor is V yeah yeah and if we can just also acknowledge my camera that I built oh, is this yes, it is. <laughs> you made that yeah there's detail in there right like that's pretty yeah. good yes. wow, look at that. That and is, if you see, there's like a little uh, walkie-talkie over there in, uh, I don't know whose oh. hand that is there, but that's the oh. needle when they first see <laughs> the needle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> See, that's, we could do a fan series, a fan mini series out of Lego stop motion. There you go. Just do season four with all Legos and voiceovers. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm gonna file that one away as 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 a kind of a, a last resort. <laughs> <laughs> As I recently directed a, yeah, I recently directed a puppet show, uh, which is airing this week. Uh, it's actually airing in the U.S. and in Canada right now. And for that, oh, wow. I used like Playmobil and little characters, and I and I storyboarded the entire two episodes because puppets wow. is very interesting to work with. But yeah. like, uh, what's the name of the well, show? The Barbarian and the Troll. I'll just oh, put it on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Craig. Uh, uh, yeah, Craig David Wallace. Yep. who uh, directed uh, the last episode he was on with us and he mentioned he had directed an episode too said it was yeah. pretty wacky it's wacky fun he was yes. up, he was the block before me and i've directed yeah. the block after him same on this show actually he was before me and i was after yeah. him on this show as well yeah let me just uh, before i forget i just want to put this picture of uh this picture up i have of natalie uh because we have a lot of sci-fi fans here and uh if i'm not mistaken this is natalie on the expanse Oh, cool. Yeah. A different look. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I I like to say that I've never had such a great time having such a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, also like, you know, great cast and a lot of great, you know, people behind the scenes. I had auditioned for a different role. She was like this savvy political lady and, you know, um, really manipulative and wearing like, you know, tight military things and, and heels. And it didn't quite, it didn't end up going my way. I was on hold for it. It went a different way. I totally get it. But I guess they liked me enough to say, well, let's find something else for her. And it was this character, Rona. And I have a bad habit of doing this, but I keep, I like to think of like all the other people I would cast in a role that I play sometimes. <laughs> and I had such a clear vision of, of Rona uh, being someone other than me. So, uh, yeah, she was she was a really tough cookie, but uh, ultimately fun to play because it was almost like our scenes were like their own sort of like bottle episode within the episode. Mm. Um, and you meet some really fun characters that were, were only there, like my colleagues that are deep and buried in this prison. It's like its own little disaster movie where we're trying to escape from the bottom of the sea and tower is where we were shooting. And uh, the only place like with enough concrete, and then, you know, by the time we finally escape, not all of us make it. And then the whole thing was actually done green screen because we were supposed to shoot this outside, but it was too windy uh, for the techno crane. Oh. <laughs> there it is again. It was all these crane shots, and it was way too windy to risk the cranes, so we ended up having to do the green screen. But um, I just love Wes. I think. He reminds me of three. Oh, yeah. Kind of like this really hard, sure. badass military guy um, who's got, you know, he's a bit of a sociopath, but he's definitely got a softer side. <laughs> a uh, bit. Yeah. And I was really hoping in the same way sci fi was crazy enough to cancel the expanse. Mm. But luckily, you know, Jeff Bezos swooped in yeah. and saved it. And so to be part of season five had this really special energy because you've got, you know, it's like a well-oiled machine of something that's already done four seasons, but then all this new energy because they were saved. And then you also had legions of loyal fans, but then all these new fans and people are like, congrats on your new show, but it's not. Like we've done it for a while, but all this like new energy and new gratitude to be able to continue the story. And I was like, I wish that for dark matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bless your heart. It's not too Absolutely. late. Yeah. I, Never yeah, too late. I, I, I did too. And oh my gosh, I totally spaced out. I didn't. I did not realize that you were on the Expanse, like the new season. I just, I just realized that. I love like, oh my god! Really? Don't you love that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I love that. You know that once you're in like more than one series, Natalie, uh, as a, in the sci-fi, you start becoming sci-fi royalty in the eyes mm -hmm. of the fans. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. I don't know if I'd call it royalty. I'm, you know, one of the happy, you know, minions to play in the proverbial sci-fi sandbox. Um, but yeah, there's like definitely been uh, sort of a growing amount of work, I guess, within the sci-fi and horror world, which is very cool. Well, so it's the best world. genre, so you know. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't mix genres. No. I like to mix it up. And I said it's the best one. It's my favorite. I love sci-fi. Oh, sci-fi. Yeah. 
Uh, so we have another picture, a close up of the Legos. Um, <laughs> and this is this is you taking uh, the cast <laughs> through the blocking. That's a good picture. Yeah. No <laughs> loving it. Like everyone's just like. Everyone just felt like a kid again, I guess. Yeah. Like, look, look at all, look all the smiles mean? on their faces. Roger yeah. looks Roger. like a kid. Yeah, they're all smiling. Yeah. You know, you have to make yeah. it too, right? I love that Six is taking a picture like, no, nah, I got to show this yeah. to people. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So great. It's like your inner child comes out when there's Legos around. Mm. It just helps though to be able to visualize, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like storyboards when they're available, but this like takes it up 10 notches. This is amazing. All righty. And we have a couple more pictures. And Joe, how, I mean, um, Melanie, how do other directors do this process, by the way, that you've seen? How do they just, do they draw it out? Uh, yeah, you know what? A lot of them, yeah, you can do overheads. You know, but part like part of the prop the the prep process is yes, you draw overheads and and all of that. For me, with bigger visual effects stuff or very complicated sequences, I have used toys on many of shows, and it is so helpful. Like I directed the show called Endlings, and I had a six-page action sequence with seven cast, a car crash, and then a whole bunch of visual effects creatures. So like a, an elephant, a worm, uh, a giant creature, and all of these things, and so. I basically brought in toys and all the casts were around and we read the scene and I acted out like where all the VFX creatures and beasts were gonna go and when the car crash came and because the car crash hits an alien. It's just really, it's a wild show, it's a family show. But um, but we did that and honestly, this that the time that we spent just going through and me playing the little characters and everybody saw it, we were able to just shoot all kinds of magic all day because I didn't have to keep explaining it over and over and over. Everybody sees your vision immediately and that was really helpful. Wow. I love this picture. I love these people. Oh yeah, there's Norman Aww. Denver on the left, our line producer, and uh, of course uh, you may recognize the uh, one of the hardest working actors in Canada, Roger Cross. Totally. I got Ooh, to work with Roger on the strain, but we never had a scene together, and we didn't quite have a scene in this together, like. I feel like he was in the room, but I was, I was. Yeah, in the you. Car. Yeah, you were. You were. You were isolated in that. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's hard, it was harder for him to kind of interact. Your his yeah. character interact with. And Norm, uh, we actually shot a series in Budapest. That was the last time I saw him. We were like drinking Hungarian beers in Budapest for the show Ransom. Oh yeah. Oh. Just, I, actually, I ran into Norman uh, a couple of weeks ago when I went to get my vaccine. He was actually getting vaccinated as well and, and we ended up talking and uh, he was mentioning some show that he was working on with uh, a few of the uh, old Dark Matter gang. Yeah, I remember actually uh, crossing paths with the whole crew and, and Jay at Comic-Con. Yeah. I was there for the stream and yeah. Rob was sort of like doing the double dance because he's like, I'm on whole shows, but I had already done a, a couple of the episodes, so I kind of was like, you know, uh, the interloper and the dark matter pictures, and then he would um, interlope in the string pictures and right. back. And yeah, we're just lucky to be on, you know, two shows that were, you know, invited to Comic Con. So cool. Yeah, that's always a blast. Yeah. Remember those days? Yeah. Uh, would you? Uh, uh, would Natalie? Would you like to see Joe more at a, at the Comic Cons at the conventions? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Okay. Well, I, uh, yes. I, 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 I like I like the SDCC just because it's uh, you know it's San Diego um, and it's just so huge. Um, but I mean, I, I you know conventions are nice. I just I, uh, yeah. to, to me they feel more sort of like something for the for the actors. No, you can't because all of this is out of your brain. Exactly. You're saying these words if it wasn't for your yes. beautiful There's person. So many fans who want to hear from the creators and like get mm. behind their minds. Like it's not all about the flashy on screen portrayal. It's behind the scenes too. Mm. Yeah. Yo, don't you just love walking around pretending to be a fan and meet, meeting people like Nikki? Uh, well, you know, I remember being at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, one year and 
I was kind of walking with the cast of, of Stargate Atlantis, and someone came up to me and was like, "Hey, can I have your autograph?" But he's asking everybody their autograph. I was like, "Sure." And then he was like, "Who are you again?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm David. The guy you asked for donuts, donuts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the donut yeah. guy. No, I think I think fans obviously want to be able to like you know they care so much about story, and I think it's your brain that they want to be able to pick. Like I would just be writing your profiles. Well, when we when you do uh, NatCon, yeah, uh, put me at the top of your list. I, I will attend that one. This is Ontario, where I'm from, and I haven't even been to it because I think they want the Lost Girl people, which is how. Oh I'm, yeah. Oh yeah, Lost Girl. So they've invited Chris Holden Reed and Paul Amos. I'm like, I'm from. That's my hometown, and nobody wants me here. Oh, when they show up, just show up, get a, a, a card table in the corner totally. and just have fun. Try some of the beer and hey, I'll be here. So, <laughs> that's a great shot. So, this shot was uh, here's the uh, assistant directors. This is the them. Can you share her screen? Oh yes, yeah, I can share my oh, screen. My, I'm sorry, my bad. Oh. And that's okay. I'm just holding my iPad. It's probably lo fi but that's <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Brandon <laughs> and uh, my first AD <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and Josh. <laughs> and Josh. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah. yeah. So that so that shot that we did there was had three different elements to it. So we would because to get the reflection in there and because of like the lighting and to see everybody. So we would shoot. We shot the first half, and their hands had to be. Uh, we shot this part there with uh, Android, and then we took her out, and then we did the reflection, and then we did the other half. Mm. It's, a, it's a visual effect shot, but you never know. That's the beauty of it. Amazing. Mm. Now, Melanie, did I, I've, this, I may have missed this. Did you ever act yourself? Uh, no, like never that I counted, like in elementary school. And I did, I did have a headshot, and I thought maybe I could be an actor, like in high school, which is a pretty hilarious thing, but no, never. <laughs> no, you can tell by the way someone reads the words. You're just born with it. Clearly, you've got you know acting and directing and stop animation Lego, all of it. I <laughs> <laughs> story a lot, yes, but I think I'm a little too self conscious to be an actor. <laughs> okay, and this was the uh, like where, where was this? There's a whirly ball court. Whirly in the ball court, world. yes. Yeah. Oh my God. And whirly ball, in case you don't know, is basically like a bumper car that drives around on the ground here and there's nets on each side of this room was a net. And then you're in these bumper cars and you throw these balls around trying to score. Yeah. And we try oh, to do this. I've never heard of this at all. This, this sounds this like seems Canadian. Fun. I don't know what <laughs> it is. I don't think it's a sport that ever took off. Yeah, I've, I've never, it was the first time I've seen it and the last time I've ever heard of it, <laughs> this episode. That's so hilarious. great, though. Yeah. Um, we want to thank Tom, by the way, too, for uh, Tom and Gap Stargate for our, doing the promos for Dark Matter Monday. Thanks, Tom. Thank, oh, thank you, Tom. Yes. Uh, lots of creativity put into that by those two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I got to say, it, it, you, it looks appropriate that you guys went here, Joe, to this place. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it, it, this was you know, it, it, this was a challenging episode for like many reasons. Um, I think it was one of those things where basically it was kind of a tight window, and for scheduling, we chose this location because it was like right across the street, and and kind of had to make it work. And and again, mm -hmm. to her credit, uh, Melanie did make it work. So yeah. Thanks. It did, it did. It definitely did have its challenges, though. And like, I think we weren't a fan of the orange necessarily. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, we spent a lot of time talking to Craig about how we can make it um, into something. But surprisingly, if you, it's funny because we should have taken pictures of what this place looked like beforehand and what we made it yeah. into. We worked. Before and know. after. Yeah. Do, do you want to address this question, Melanie? Uh, sure. How did you break into becoming a director? Or how did you well, prepare to become a director? Yeah. So to become a director, I actually started out as a script supervisor. So I was a, us doing continuity for I would say maybe 10 or so years until I was working with a company who offered me a movie to direct so the, it was a movie called Harm's Way and it was kind of a wild thing but it, how did I become a director I spent years protecting the story as a script supervisor and then one day I was sparked creatively and wanted to tell the story and then that's how um, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how my transition sort of happened. And I was working with a company, Peace Arch, that did a whole bunch of horror thriller titles. And I was there as a script supervisor and they had offered me a movie to direct. And I said, yes. And I um, loved it. <laughs> also should mention, because I should, I, now that we're talking about it, just I remembered uh, Melanie actually worked with me on Utopia Falls. Uh, again, a show sort of by Shoran, created by R.T. Thorne. Um, and I remember actually at the beginning, we were looking for directors and I was like, Melanie Orr, you have to hire Melanie Orr. And of course, this always happens when you 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 pitch a director or an actor or a writer to a production company. If they haven't worked with them before, they're always like, I don't know, and can we see her real? And and uh, you know, you know, and then finally they said yes. Uh, and then after Mel delivered her the two-part episode, they were like, you know, this this, this is an amazing block. I mean, they they loved your work on on Utopia Falls. So, uh, you know, another uh, feather in your cap. Thank you. Well, I, thank you so much for bringing me on to that too. I mean, I know you definitely went to bat for me and, you know, I remember my uh, earlier meetings too. It was like, well, you know, anyway, I just kind of talked about character and what I, what I like about the, the concept mm-hmm. of the show at that point, like there was no script that I read either, but anyway, thank yeah. you very much. But, but, but I mean, the point is that they were somewhat reticent, but you proved them uh, I'm not saying wrong, but you certainly proved yourself, and and they loved loved your work, and and I, I remember they reached out to you again, but you were I had already taken a job, uh, I think in New York, uh, so you couldn't return. But uh, you know, yeah. you know. Um, I, it's I think it's interesting that you said that your first job was kind of like a, a you know, protecting continuity and and, and the story like yeah mm-hmm. and and lore and basically everything like that because i feel like right now that's what's kind of lacking incredibly mm-hmm. in uh in sci-fi right now and it's, you know even in fantasy so um i just think that that's fascinating because uh we need more of that job like people in hollywood like i don't know what's going on over there but we need more people to be doing that for specific sci-fis uh that are that grand. I mean, I heard, uh, Joe, I heard Stargate's coming back. So yeah, I mean, eventually need, it will come back. Yeah, they're gonna need the lore continuity mm-hmm. uh, people <laughs> on that for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't you know, let Nina, it just go muck. <laughs> well, yeah, a note to that is a good like thing to always think of, like, you know, my approach to like, you know, directing anything is like, shoot the story, not the movie. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so that's sort of a you know an underlying theme that I bring to projects. Let me just uh, uh, just I'm sorry. Let me just uh, address this one second. John Burns, uh, thank you. Uh, we have wow. no words uh, for wow. for your your you're getting him getting us almost to the goal. Thank you, John Burns, so much for your thank generosity you. and and um, I, I, you're doing a good thing. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very you, much. Wow, thank nice, John. You. I, I saw your comment and then I saw PJ saw your comment when his eyebrows went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you again, John Burns. And thanks to everybody. Uh, absolutely. Everybody uh, will, we're going to be, you know, getting that to bird of prey this week. Um, he is, hopefully it will contribute to him actually uh, getting to the hospital in case, in case he needs to get to the hospital and, and then bird bird is bird is lurking and says thank you. Uh, this is what community is all about, right? That's why I love this community so much. Um, we this is this isn't the first time someone's been in need, and everyone in the community is like pulled together to to help fund them in the time of need. And so thank you, everybody, you guys. Even from just being here, and if even if you just shared the link out on Twitter or your social media, it means it means everything. So thank you guys, and thank you to Natalie and and um, thank you to Natalie and Melanie for being sport. And because uh, mm-hmm. I, I you didn't know anything about this, yes, we just threw this at you at the last minute. So. I'm thrilled. Thank you for inviting me, for having me, Joe. Thanks for thinking of me. Thanks for writing a part for me, Melanie. Thanks for directing me. And thank you, everyone, for your generosity. This was amazing. It's perfect timing because my computer's about to die. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Natalie, is there anything you want to tell us about the breach that you can tell us? Oh, wow. Now i got to find my charger. Without um, getting into trouble. 
So that, I mean, working with Rodrigo, um, Rodrigo Godino, who is the editor in chief and founder of Room Org Magazine for horror fans out there, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, Slash is an executive producer and is doing the score. Hmm. What? And wow. with Alan Hocko at like an abandoned Super 8 motel in Perry Sound. So that was creepy in itself. Um, <laughs> but it's a really incredible psychological sort of quantum, quantum horror is what I call it. Hmm. Ooh, oh. I like anything quantum. <laughs> yeah. And I also, for sci-fi fans, um, I mean, it's a supernatural thriller, but I shot a, a feature called Thunderbird that premiered at the Whistler Film Festival, and it just came out this week in Canada on Vimeo On Demand and Amazon in the UK and US. And it is a, I like to call it, it's like an, an indigenous supernatural thriller with Ooh. elements of sci-fi in there. And it's a dark, beautiful story as well that's out right now this week. So Congratulations. a lot of people worked really hard on that, so I wanted to plug that. What, what, what's that one called again? Thunderbird. Thunderbird, okay. Yeah. And that's out this week. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, like five years ago and finally seeing the light of day now. So that's exciting. Melanie, th uh, thank you, uh, Natalie. Any last words, Melanie, for that you, you'd like to share with the audience that you, uh, anything you're doing? Uh, well, I'd say my The Barbarian and the Troll is a show, puppet show. It's a really fun uh, episode that airs in Canada this Friday on YTV. It just aired last week in the U.S. on Nickelodeon. Um, it's really fun if you're into puppets. It's a really cool escape room episode. And the episode last week was about a haunted house, so I, I would pitch that for sure. I would also leave it open. Feel free to message me on Twitter or find me on Instagram. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. Uh, I love uh, answering anything you guys have. I know a lot of things have come up here, but I haven't been able to multitask it. So feel free to reach out and send me any messages, and uh, we'll definitely chat. And, and those thank links you so much for having me. This has been really amazing. Like I feel so excited right now. <laughs> Great, thank you. Those links will be posted uh, below. Hey, hey. Nice hanging out. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. Hi. Joe, so um, last word for Joe. Uh, thanks for coming. It was great to see. I, uh, like I said, you know, Melanie mentions the fact she's on Twitter. Uh, Natalie is also on Twitter, so go find them. Uh, and as is pretty much, I think, everyone on the panel as well. So uh, go find them as well and follow them. And again, thank you guys. Thank you to our amazing guests. It was lovely catching up with you guys again. And hopefully we can do it uh, in person. Uh, now the patio season is uh, is upon us. Woo, patio yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Good. Yes. So, uh, Joe and Melanie, one last question from John. Um, he said, uh, with special effects today, will there be any need to place a person inside something which might induce claustrophobia? Uh, well, it depends on the situation. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. If you want to get that yeah. shot, you got to get the shot. Yeah. <laughs> what element do we need? I don't know. We do weird stuff. We do weird yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Headcast. Headcast. Yeah. I'm not well, supposed I, to think yeah. if you do it. Like, I remember, I remember Martin Wood, I think it was, Joe, we were mm -hmm. saying that, um, that, um, oh, that, uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Judge was, could not wear a helmet because he, it was, it was really bothered him. Oh, yeah, it was very close. So I, I think what he's saying is that uh, maybe there won't be a need to to put people in that situation with uh, with VFX. Possibly. I mean, it, everything you know, the technology is constantly improving, and I'm always amazed at what what it can accomplish. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, not only what it could accomplish, accomplish, but how much cheaper things are getting too. So, yeah. I mean, as long as we don't uh, forego performance for an effect, mm -hmm. that's why I would always protect, right? Like. If yeah. somebody being in the box is going to give some sort of like performance, then I think that's what we do, right? Ooh, we don't we, get rid of that. We, for, we, we just got funded. Oh, amazing! amazing. Yes. Excellent. Yay. Yay. Beautiful note to go out on. Oh my gosh! Nice, fabulous. So much. Way to go, Bird of Prey. Let you know what? Can you guys hang out for thirty seconds? I want to show the. I just want to show the the the, uh, the fundraiser page. Yeah, uh, here I can we are share there. My yeah, I have we it are up. there. There it is. If you want to share my screen. Oh, thanks. I, awesome. I, I just put it up. Thanks. There we are. Oh, fantastic. Yay. Woo. Nicely done. Awesome. Okay. Thank you to everybody. And thank you to our guests and uh, Joe and everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um, and Bird says thank you.
There he is. Uh, see, this is such a great thing to do today, too. We get to see everybody and this amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Love it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Larry Larius, uh, for this for the super staker. Thank you so much to every single person uh, who has participated this week. Special thanks to uh, Captain uh, Captain Trek Deej, Nerd Gary from Nerdrotic, Doomcock, Tom, Andre, Podcast, um, uh, Larry, Larry, everybody, uh, and John, of course, who made such a uh, large donation. Thank you again, Natalie and Melanie as well, and Joseph, the entire panel. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Nina, oh, Nate, sorry, Nate knows reviews. Galinda, Jacob, Archer, Sarah Jett, John Burns. Thank you again, John, Kareen, Stephen Otten, uh, Berta Prey. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, everybody who has been in here, thank you. You all have a blessed day. Um, and uh, let, let's just a wonderful feeling to, to go out on. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.